This is a very important tree. Don't let its unkempt appearance fool you. It may have won the genetic lottery. If you came here about 15 years ago, this would have been thousands of apple seedlings. We probably had at one point 5,000 or more seedling trees that were planted 18 inches apart in rows. Of those 5,000 apple trees, no two were the same. And Dr. Chris Walsh and his team at the University of Maryland are in search of the best ones. Wow. This tree, known as CP101, has something special. And we're still a little bit early now, but if we reach in and get something that's started turning red, they're still not quite ready, but they're pretty good. For the past three decades, Chris has been breeding a better apple for Maryland farmers. When we started this project, I was testing varieties from Northern European breeding programs, from Minnesota, from Washington State, from New York. They're all much colder areas than where we are now. Chris lets the trees grow with minimal human intervention so he can study all their natural characteristics. I realized that many of the new apple varieties did not do well here. They either got fire blight disease or they were green one day and they drop on the ground the next day. And so I started a relatively simple apple breeding project and almost 30 years later, we're actually starting to come to fruition, no pun intended. But it didn't come easily. Not only did the perfect apple tree have to thrive in Maryland's hot, humid climate, it also had to resist blight and get ripe in the middle of October when consumer demand is greatest. On top of that, the tree had to produce a lot of fruit, and the fruit had to be the right size, color, flavor, and texture. Plus, it had to be easy to grow, pick, store, and transport. So with that laundry list of requirements, Chris and his team began crossbreeding apples and planting the seeds at the Western Maryland Research and Education Center, a University of Maryland-owned farm in Keatesville. They started with several hundred trees, then picked the 30 best ones. They used those 30 to breed a second generation and planted 5,000 more. Based on their many criteria, they narrowed the group from 5,000 to 500 to 50 down to about seven. And CP101 looked the most promising. So the light bulb probably went off around 2010 or 11, but then after that, it was good that year, the next year, the next year, then you know you really have something if you get two or three good years in a row. In 2014, Dr. Walsh and his research partner, Julia Harshman, filed a patent for CP101. She named the apple Antietam Blush, after the Civil War battlefield located minutes from the research farm. But the work had just begun. Hey, Hi. look what we brought back from Keatesville. Oh, great. Back in the lab at College Park, research assistant Audra Bissett continues testing the apples, checking color, firmness, sugar content, and more. Data like this allows us to share sort of that information with farmers. And it helps them know when to pick, when to store, what to store, and how really not to waste a lot of food when they do this. Making sure they can provide the best possible fruit to consumers. But Dr. Walsh hasn't pinned all his hopes on this one variety. He's now studying a third generation of seedlings, some of which descended from CP101. I love my job. You know, it's really fun, and here I am still excited about work at the time most people are retiring and trying to move to Florida or something like that. I got a house in Florida, but I don't have time to be there because I want to be out here instead. Because who knows, one of these seedlings could be the next lucky tree. Maybe. The state of Maryland has over 35 orchards and several have already started growing Antietam blush apples. And did you know an average apple has only about 80 calories? Not bad for a tasty snack. 